Hello friends and welcome back to my crafty space. My name is Crystal and in today's video I am going to be doing a project planning process with you guys using the June Stories by the Month kit from Allie Edwards for 2021. Now normally I do unboxings of these kits as well but moving forward I think I'm just going to do the project planning and I'll leave a link in the description area that will take you to the unboxing that Allie does herself. I think that that might be a little bit more beneficial for you and and also in the case that that something doesn't come in my kit that should come in all of the kits. That way you'll be able to see specifically what you are receiving in these kits from her herself. Uh, for instance, I believe that the June kit was supposed to come with a tiny phrase sticker sheet of some sort, but there wasn't one in mine. So um, I'm going to direct you to her to find out what is actually missing from my kit this month. So um, moving forward, we're just going to be doing project planning with these Stories by the Month kits. So what I'm going to do is put you on fast forward while I figure out two to three stories that I can tell with this product. And then I'm also going to set some to the side to use for a project life spread, which I think will be really fun. And uh, once I have all of that done, we'll slow back down and close out for today. So let's go ahead and dive in. To start off with planning my projects for today, the first thing I'm going to do is punch out all of these circles from the backing and from the negative piece. One thing I will say about some of the chipboard lately is that the cut has not been all the way through to the back and the backing, so they don't punch out quite as easily as they have in the past. I know the creative team for Allie Edwards has brought this up and Allie herself has experienced the same thing, so hopefully the customer service slash quality control people will catch this and it won't be a continuing thing um, hopefully it can be resolved because I like to punch these all out in order to to spread them around and figure out where they can best go so what I did is I punched the entire backing off and I just have the negative pieces face down on my table because I actually have an idea for those as well and then I went ahead and trimmed off the excess backing around the circles so I can just go ahead and use them as they are. Now, I'm going through my cards and I'm trying to set aside anything that has the word June in it because this is the June kit, but I am using it right now during the month of May. So my stories are going to be uh, either from now or from the past. It doesn't really matter, but those need to be not necessarily month specific. So anything that is month specific I set aside for Project Life for when June arrives. And I'm doing the same thing with these chipboard pieces. It takes me a minute to realize that the orange, like the deepest color orange one, actually has the word June in it as well. So I'm going to put that one over with the Project Life stuff and bring over Love This Month to add with what I've already got. So I have an idea for those circles. There are eight of them in total, but because two of them go with the Project Life June product, I have six remaining, which means that if I were to add those into two by two pockets, that would give me six pockets with the chipboard circles and six pockets with something else. So that is definitely what I'm going to do with those and why I just went ahead and stuck those over on a six by eight layout um, sketch template. So now I'm going through the remainder of my cards, trying to see which ones spark a story idea for me or which ones would go well together. So for instance, there is this card here that says, be your own kind of wonderful, dance to the beat of your own drum, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And I love the way that that card looks with the polka dot pattern card, as well as the details three by four card. So I'm thinking I'll create a story using those three components. Then I also have the this and that and memory so there's a, a repetition in terms of what the card looks like not necessarily the color or what it says but in general having the title at the top with a blank space in the middle and then a little bit of color on the bottom that those match so i was thinking that those might be good with the two by two pocket page I also really love the sun uh, card and I'm trying to figure out where I want to add that. The rainbow journaling card I'm going to put in with the rest of my June components just because I couldn't figure out exactly what I wanted to do with that. And then I also have the four by six card that has like story one, story two, story three, story four 
up at the top next to the negative pieces of my chipboard, which you'll see here in a little bit. Then I remembered that I actually have these five little white wood veneer pieces that have a very tropical look to them. So there's a palm tree and a sun and sunglasses and a heart and like, like a fruity drink type of deal. And those pieces really brought to mind the honeymoon that Aaron and I went on. So we went to Jamaica on our honeymoon. And I have this crazy fun picture from one of the days on the beach, we did this group activity thing and we were all dressed up in like leaves and stuff. Like we had clothes on, but then like leaves and stuff on top of that. So I'm thinking about rummaging through all of my photos, pulling that, that one out and then telling some story about our honeymoon, which, you know, there's lots of story that can be told about our honeymoon. I recently did a project about going to Jamaica in a little traveler's notebook. And so this would give me an opportunity to tell a little bit bigger of a story with that stuff. So that's what I'm going to do there. And then I decided that uh, because I have those five little pieces, I'm going to use those as markers for journaling. So I took the this and that card thinking that that could be my title for the top and then ultimately I'm going to put the this and that back where I got it from and instead choose the one that says memory because I felt like that made more sense as a jumping off point and maybe maybe what I'll do is um, in my journaling I'll say something like I remember when because that signifies a memory of an event. So that's what I'm thinking I'll do here. And I'm just going to use that at the top of a three by eight and then add those little icons and my journaling down the side of a three by eight card and pair that with a um, six by eight using the cards that you see there as well as a photo. And then I'm thinking I'll make the details card interactive where you can pull it out and there'll be some additional details on that card. Since I don't need the full four by six here, I am going to chop it in half just so I only have a piece in order to use on this spread. And then while I'm at it, I'm just gonna go ahead and chop off the title here so that uh, I don't have to do that later. So I know exactly what I'm gonna do with it already. I don't need to uh, worry about ruining it. It's going to be totally fine. So all these pieces will go together inside of one of my pouches. I'm gonna zip that up and it's just ready for me to add in my photos and my actual journaling to complete it. So this is the spread I'm going to create with the negative portions of the chipboard. Uh, right now you see the back sides because there's nothing protecting the stickiness of those from everything else. Um, but my idea is to pull out one of my random story traveler's notebooks, uh, which I have one that's from Studio Calico and I'm just filling in the stories randomly as I feel like it mostly because I like working in the traveler's notebook size and I have these in my stash so I would like to just go ahead and use them up. So the chipboard squares there are four by four which makes them pretty perfect for going inside of a traveler's notebook which is four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So it'll give me a little bit of border around those and it will make this page bulky. You know there is that but I am okay with that. I actually don't mind chunky albums and bulk inside of my traveler's notebooks at all. I think it's totally fine and it makes them kind of fun to work in. So I really like this page that's got this deep green on the one side because there is a lot of those green tones in the kit and on the opposite side, the real side of the two by twos, some of them have the outline where there's a, a little bit of green in there as well. So I'm thinking I will back these with photos, maybe some pattern paper and embellishments, but most, most likely it'll be all photos. Um, at a bare minimum, I'm going to do four photos because then those four photos can correlate to these four journaling blocks from the four by six card. Now the four by six card, my plan is to fussy cut out all four of those boxes and then I'm going to add them down the um, center of the left side of the traveler's notebook page and then i will also create some kind of title piece most likely using the word delights which is on the stamp set and then i also we're i'm going to pull in the remaining little bit of that polka dot card and that may be what i add at the top with maybe the word delights over top or you know something to that extent which i will figure out much more when um, i actually do this page and this one is going to be like four random stories of right now and that's going to be my 
my project. Sometimes I do that, especially when there are when there's product like this that's got, you know, story one, two, three, four, is just look back at, let's say, the last four weeks. And what are four random stories that maybe I haven't told in more detail or where I have extra photos that I haven't had a chance to document yet and I will pull those out and tell the story of those photos. For this one, this is going to be a spread that will go in Izzy's album. So this is where we're going to have the two by twos. And I'm going to pair this with a three by eight. So a divided three by eight, I should say. So I'm going to put the this and that at the top and then that will be my home for journaling. And then at the bottom, we'll just add in the sun journaling card and um, call that good, just a decorative piece there at the bottom. I really, really love that card. And actually, when this kit came out last year in the digital form, I used this, I used that sun card in order to create a hybrid spread for my son. And it is a really cool, it was a really cool project. I quite enjoyed it. Um, so then for the two by two side, you can see I'm just going to alternate photos and the chipboard circles. I will likely add the chipboard circles on top of either patterned paper squares or I might create some repeat stamp pattern and then add that on the back. It's usually what I like to do in order to finish it because um, I don't want to limit what's going on the back side of that page to being only circles. Um, so by having the circle on top of the square, it lets me do whatever I want to the back. Um, so then I've got a range of supplies right here, which I'm gonna pull out so you can see. This is what I am saving for my project life spread. I work in a nine by 12. So having four journaling, you know, four three by four cards and two um, four by six cards is going to be totally fine. That's more than enough for me to be able to get an entire week told. Now, last but not least, I was looking at this stamp set and I really wanted to figure out a way that I could create a spread using primarily the stamps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a stamped title or what do I wanna say. Basically, I'm going to take out a large number stamp and um, use that to create numbers in five places down the edge. And I'm writing a number sign or the pound sign because I don't know exactly what number is going to go there. And then on top of the number, I'm going to stamp the sentiment that says counting all the good stuff. So I want to sit down and think about things that are really good right now, like maybe how many books have I read so far this year? Or, um, you know, how many flowers have bloomed in the garden? That sort of thing. Things that make me feel happy. And I can, um, if I want, I can take photos of those things to include. So I'm adding little boxes to represent, you know, potential photo space. Or I can just go ahead and type out my journaling and make this a no photo spread. I'm totally okay with that too. Um, so we're just going to layer stamp on top of stamp and then kind of go from there. I wrote in some lines to signify like potentially stitching to create, you know, layers of separation there. I'm not sure. I'm leaving this one a little bit more up in the air. What I will do though is I will grab over my stash of pattern paper and find one piece. It doesn't take me long. Actually, it's right here at the front basically. I'm going to find a piece of paper and cut that down into a couple of strips that I can use to create borders at the top and the bottom of the spread. Um, I think it will be nice to have a little bit of pattern paper in there because it's going to be fairly stark otherwise. So this is going to give it a little bit more interest. I did bring over the stamp set there. I'm thinking about titling this, this and that. Um, so I brought that over to make sure uh, to make these wide enough to fit the stamp on there. And then I cut those into strips. We'll stick them in the pocket and that'll do it. All right, friends, so that completes my project planning for today. So I was able to pull out four different stories with this kit in addition to a week of project life. Now, one of the stories is primarily using the stamp set, and that is something that I would really like to try to do more of, is to find ways to intentionally use the stamp set to help me create stories as well as the other physical product. So I'm excited about that one. And then uh, you did see in the video that I've got the negative pieces remaining 
from the chipboard sheet. So those are these ones right here. But since the backing came off with the actual chipboard and I had to trim that out, the back sides are sticky and I don't have any, um, if I had like parchment paper or something, I might be able to stick the, this to that, but I don't have any of that here at home. So this is probably going to be the first project I work on just so I can get these used up before I accidentally stick them to something that they shouldn't be stuck to. So that is going to likely be the video that you will see today in addition to this planning video. If you enjoyed seeing how I planned out these projects, I would love a thumbs up down below and make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can see all of my future crafty videos. Also, let me know in the comment section down below if any of these stories seemed like ones that you would like to tell. You know, you are always more than welcome to scrap lift me. That is why I share my projects is to help inspire and uh, get you into your creative space. So if you are thinking about doing any of the same stories, let me know. I'd, I'd love to know what you're thinking for your June kit this year. All right, friends, I will have another video coming up today with the process for that one project. And then you'll see the rest of these throughout the course of the month. So keep your eyes out for that. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will catch you all in the next video. Bye friends.